This is a dropper flask or sprinkler bottle shaped like a Roman helmet. The decoration is called snake threading, and though it's very fine in detail, it's all done at the furnace. The dropper flask begins with a gather of clear glass on the end of a small blowpipe. Marvering is used to create a more cylindrical shape and one which is perfectly round and concentric with the blowpipe. An initial bubble is blown. The bubble is elongated by holding it down, the tip rubbed lightly against the marver to make the tip slightly pointed. The glass is reheated, and the first part to soften is the relatively thin hollow portion. The bubble is blown a little bigger, held downward for gravity to elongate it to become a tube. The tip is rolled on the cold metal arm of the bench. The tube is hardened, the thick glass on the bottom stays soft, and to ensure that the tube stays hard, I blow cold air on the tube. Here's the constriction or neck, which will enable the separation from the blowpipe to take place later in the process. I attach a rubber blow hose so that I can blow while I'm working with tools on the soft glass. This tube replaces an assistant blowing when requested. This is a sprinkler bottle, so a narrow constriction has to be made between the base of the tubular neck and the bulbous vessel body. The constriction is made a little narrower. The tube is cooled. The bulbous portion below the tube is reheated and then held upward. And the shoulder of the bubble eventually touches the base of the tube and creates a seal, leaving the narrow portion internal. The seal has been made, the space between the tube and the body is elongated a little bit. Next, the fin-like structure is created by pincering. The spherical shape has to be re-established, and this is done by gradually reheating the bubble with its fin-like structure and blowing gently. The snake thread decoration takes a couple of assistants. On the end of a metal rod, I gather a teeny amount of glass, hand it off to an assistant, and as I'm creating the thread decoration, another assistant uses a tool, a roulade tool, to create the ribbing.
As I make the meandering pattern, my assistant Harry uses the roulade tool to create the decoration. Devon holds the gathering rod in position so that the glass elongates, while with the pincers I can have greater control. This is the making of the two eyes. The glass cools very quickly and it has to be incised with the roulade tool immediately, thus the need for an assistant. Of course, we have no idea about how many workers actually operated at a Roman furnace at any given time. They may have had an assistant, two or three assistants, or no assistants. But a process like this requires the help of others. Next comes the transfer to the punty. This sprinkler bottle has a thick wrap just below the rim. And there's another smaller, thinner wrap about halfway down the neck of the vessel. The tube is thoroughly softened and the final shaping begins. Before placing the object in the annealer for slow cooling, it's flashed in the furnace to make sure all parts are at about a thousand degrees Fahrenheit.